We're now going to consider another kind of connection, another form of ripple effects. We're going to hear from Jennifer Corriero, who is the co-founder and executive director of Taking It Global, which is a way of using energy, idealism, and technical expertise of young people worldwide to address, address global problems. Again, the theme here is disturbances around the world, uh, amplifying ripples, and the ways that people can reorganize themselves to, to address them. She is from Canada, she is 28 years old, and she is tremendously impressive. So I ask you please to join me in welcoming Jennifer Corriero. I'm so thrilled to be here with all of you to talk about the theme of the butterfly effect. I remember back when I was in grade 12, I did a physics independent study project and I studied chaos theory and my professor was really curious with where I was going with my paper. And so now I think he'd be proud of me <laughs> to know that I was here in this panel and sharing some reflections on what young people can contribute to solving some of the world's greatest problems. And I actually want to invite you, who have your cell phones, to text in your reflections to this question. What contribution can young people make to addressing global poverty? So I'll just give you a minute there to think about it. What brings me here is that I believe that the contribution is massive. As many of you know, over 50% of the world's population is under the age of 25, and this poses an incredible opportunity as well as a potential threat. And if I go back to 1997, I actually developed a website. It was about promoting Canadian women who had struggled and fought for the rights that we have in Canada as women, and it was a website dedicated to inspiring younger girls to be more aware of the struggles of women before us. And I was invited to speak at a conference. It was actually my first conference. It was a national conference. Um, and I was invited to speak about this website that I had developed. And it was about global poverty, and it was about also how we could help respond to poverty within Canada. And I realized growing up in a sort of suburban, comfortable environment that I didn't really know very much about poverty, and I was intrigued to have a conversation with someone who was living on the streets. I invited him for lunch, and I learned about his challenges and his struggles and his hopes and his dreams. He actually wanted to become a computer programmer, and unfortunately, he was living on the streets, and he was kicked out of his house, um, so he, he left home, and he just didn't have those kinds of opportunities or encouragement, access to education, and support that was really needed for him to follow his dreams. And a lot of that conversation was really a catalyst for me when I was speaking at the conference, um, this being my first conference, and talking about the power of being able to connect people and the importance of really building on inspiration. There were people at this conference from all across the country, and I realized that the web could really be used as a platform and as a way to connect people across divides, across differences, socioeconomic divides, geographic, linguistic, and really that there was a missing opportunity which was really a need to create a learning environment to help children and youth really grow up with a sense of a global perspective and to be able to walk into the shoes of another person who's living in a very different circumstance or environment to them. And nine years ago, I was rollerblading with Michael Furtick, who is my co-founder of Taking It Global, and he was reflecting on his own experiences as a young entrepreneur. At 14, he started an internet company that he sold at 16, and as a web sort of entrepreneur, sort of looking at those opportunities, how do we create a world where more people can have access to opportunities? I am really loving the text messages you guys are sending in, talking about getting involved in one key focus, acting against it, consuming less in developed countries, spend time walking in their shoes. Thanks, guys. Promoting conversation and conservation, social networks, and how they can bring countries and people much closer. And, and so I'll invite you to kind of join me on a little journey to understand a little bit more about Taking It Global and the online social network that we launched for social good. We launched back in 2000. And actually, as a result of Google.org and some of the AdWord donations that we received, we've reached over 10 million unique young people, unique visitors, and young people through our programs that have extended offline, through many workshops that we've run in local telecenters, community centers, after-school programs. 
And really, it's become a platform for inspiration, information, and involvement, so that young people can really take action and express their visions and hopes for the future. There's over a million pieces of user-generated content on the site, and that ranges from our online global gallery, our blogs, our project pages, uh, commitments that people can make, commit to, the better, to a better world, which is a tool where people can join up and sign on different commitments and share blog postings about what they've done on those commitments. Our language platform has also been a bit of a phenomenon. We launched it in 2004, and we created a system whereby our members could actually translate the content in their own local language. It's launched in 12, but we have a lot of other languages in the works. And this system has really inspired me because I've seen how people have really taken the initiative upon themselves to really bring the site and some of the ideas and that sense of community to their communities that might not have been able to have access as a result of language divides. We have over 200,000 members in pretty much every country in the world, and there's a lot of regional diversity, which is what makes our, our network really unique. And we've been able to leverage that diversity to help influence various policy processes, especially at the international level with many UN agencies. Back in 2003, we worked very closely with the World Summit on the Information Society, and we facilitated the Youth Caucus, where we ran campaigns over national campaigns in over 30 countries. We involved thousands of youth in local consultations, e-consultations, and really tried to connect young people with their governments. We were able to convince many governments to take youth as part of their official delegations, and the youth paragraph, which was Actually, I was in the room as part of the official Canadian government delegation. It was the first paragraph that the governments had agreed upon, and it stated that young people need to be empowered as learners, developers, contributors, and decision makers in the information society. And if you really think about it, young people are growing up digital, they're growing up with technology, and especially those who are on the side of the divide with access and not those without the access. And so how do we really harness that potential to really be able to contribute? There's this expectation of being able to not only have a voice, but to say what you think and to turn your ideas and your visions into realities. And so it's really important to create a constructive and cohesive uh, environment that is, is diverse and that's connected with the different realities and issues that are being faced on local and global levels to really prepare ourselves and our current and future generations to respond to the challenges that exist, not only in the future, but today. In Don Tapscott's book, Wikinomics, he talks about taking it global as one of the world's best examples of how net geners are using digital technologies to transform the world around them. And so we've done some studies on the areas of impact, and we're thinking about sort of the butterfly effect. What happens when you bring people together with common interests or very different world realities? And the three major areas of impact that have come as a result of our site kind of fit into these groupings. The first is on support and motivation. 74% of our members surveyed feel that their experience with Taking It Global has improved their perception of the ability of youth to affect change in the world. This is something that really does give me hope. It gives me hope because if people have a positive outlook on the future and if they believe that they have an ability to affect change, this is really what's needed to prevent a sense of apathy and just submission to everything that exists and the sort of powers that be. You really need to feel that when you're faced with a problem, that you can be part of the solution. And this is a mindset that we really need to start encouraging at very young ages. The second area of impact is around networking and information. 55% of members surveyed say that taking it global has helped them to become more informed about issues that are important to them. And the third area is that shift from a sort of virtual connection to actually having an effect in the real world. And I want to share a few stories with you. Uh, the first one is, is of Christabel. She's from Kenya. And in 2006, when she found out that she was HIV positive, she didn't know where to turn. And she found out about a local youth group, but she also did some research online. And she found Taking It Global and the Global Youth Coalition on HIV AIDS, which is an initiative that we host. And she took e-courses that we ran online, and it helped her to develop a project. Uh, the Stay Alive Youth Support Group has helped them to get global exposure, and now, years later, she's also been working with UN Habitat in some of the post-conflict work in Kenya and trying to promote dialogue among youth there. We also have 
Laura, who's from Mexico, and she first heard about Taking It Global at a workshop run at the World Youth Congress, and she published her first articles on our website. It gave her the confidence to express herself, and since, she's actually written for six different newspapers in Mexico. And she's become a very active volunteer and editor on our site. A third story I want to share is um, from Mohammed in Iraq, and he talks about how before the war in 2003, he had very little contact with the outside world. Traveling was very hard and the internet was limited. Taking It Global was the first site that I really connected with. It allowed me to interact with people from across the world, and for, for once I felt connected to the world. And he talks about the debates he's had in our discussion forums, and how he's had a lot of dis disagreements, especially with people from the United States. But after these kinds of agreements, there's some sense of understanding and compassion and friendship that formed from it. And this, I think, is the basis of creating a more peaceful and sustainable world for the future. I hope these stories were inspiring for you and enjoy the rest of the conference.